SEC is no longer after ETH, you know? Market still chopping sideways. SEC isn't after ETH. Market got some relief. About to miss in some cheese. Yeah, I'm definitely throwing some cheese in there, boy. You know? But, um... Yeah, Bitcoin's still chopping around 64, 65. Looking a little bit, you know, these all coins are still bleeding, but it looks like they somewhat recovered a little bit. Um, guys, some of these all coins are like bear market lows. This is fucking ridiculous. Even these utility tokens. This is wild, you know? Nothing was safe from this letter. You know, we took some casualties to these trenches, guys. Definitely took some casualties. I mean, we had fucking artillery, we had the drones, the Jerome, the Jerome pal drones. <laughs> Every time Jerome pal opens his fucking mouth, Marcus Tank, man. Um, this shit's really fucking annoying. Ready for him to fix his fucking attitude. He's like cutting interest rates. But yeah. Um, guys. Let me talk about a little bit about what's going on. The stock market is uh, looking good. The stock market's looking bullish. And why do I, am I why do we care about what the stock market is doing? Because guys, it's directly correlated with Bitcoin. Why do we care what Bitcoin does? Because it's directly correlated with what the fuck all coins do. You know? Um, yes, S and P climbs to another record close Tuesday. Nvidia's market cap tops Microsoft. Guys, what? Nvidia is up 3.5% today. Um, yay, hello. What happens? You watch my videos, what happens? You know? Usually the bull run kicks off, Nvidia starts taking off, Bitcoin just kind of does its sideways thing. When Bitcoin starts fucking moving, it starts moving. It starts way outperforming Nvidia. Um, that's just a fucking fact. That's the fact. Anyways, moving on. This is when I was talking about this. Uh, this is on Yahoo Finance. This is crypto firm consensus says U.S. regulator has closed inquiry into ETH 2.0. Dude. Yeah. Um, seriously, guys, the SEC, they changed their tune now. Now they went from everybody's a fucking security, this and that, this and that. And also, I saw um, the staking thing. You know, guys. Ooh. All these fucking altcoins, they support securities. They're not. They're not. Alright? You know? Yeah, you guys just came out the woods, man. When Biden got elected, um, the guy that Trump had was cool with it. He said ETH wasn't a security, Bitcoin was a commodity. And Gensler comes along. And he's just looking around like, Nah, th this don't look right. I have to protect the investor, protect the investor, protect the investor. Um, eat, eat. See, everyone's a security. You're 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 a security. Shut the fuck up, dude. Like, you know? Get your ass, sit some down, and drink some humble pie. That's what you need, Gensler. Your ass. You might as well go ahead and start packing your desk up, buddy. Because you already know Trump don't want your ass. He gets that seat back wet. You know what I'm saying? Gensler, pack your bags, boy. But, um, yeah, that's just enough about that. SEC is kind of like loosening up their reign of terror, you know? Hopefully the XRP shit will be thrown out and all this stuff will get thrown out, guys. Um, I'm going to get these altcoins in a second. I just want to talk about this. This is something interesting I saw um, just about what investors... I'll just rerun through this real quick. Um, Many younger investors have, perhaps understandably, had their faith in the stock market shaken up in recent years. And that's why many have turned into alternate investments and collectibles as other potential sources of return, much more so than older investors. That's according to new data released on Tuesday by Bank of America's private bank, which worked with market research company Escalant to survey more than 1,000 high net worth individuals with more than 3 million investable assets, including primary residents, in the United States. 
Survey data found that 72% of younger investors between the ages of 21 and 43 believe it is no longer possible to achieve above average investment returns by investing solely in additional stocks and bonds. Yeah. God, people are going to wake up to this shit, man. A lot of the poor people don't really care about this shit. These are richer people. So obviously, when you have money and you watch it deplete, you're obviously going to notice, you know? Hey, you have $3 million and two years later I have $1 million. What the fuck happened? I mean, the money's still there, but that money ain't money in no more, you know? Poor people don't think about this because we get a paycheck and we spend it. We get a paycheck and we spend it. Smart people, when they get their money, they invest it and then they pay. You know? That's how they stay rich, guys. They keep out of cash and they stay in assets. That's what we're doing now. That's how you climb the ladder of life, you know? Um, it's just a fact. And the crazy thing is that 72% of people think that those beliefs are no longer achievable with traditional stocks. That goes to show you Gen Z and millennials, I would say, are the ones that are forefronting the crypto shit. You know, it's not old guys. Every time I bring it up to an old guy, they don't want to hear this shit. Oh, it's not. Bitcoin's vote isn't backed by thin air. <laughs> yeah, boy. I, mean, I don't trust none of that Bitcoin shit, boy. You know how many times I hear that when I try to tell older folks about Bitcoin? But guess what? The older folks that have fucking money that I've talked to about it, like I do remodeling, and I'm in this old person's house, and uh, they heard me listen to YouTube, uh, something about Bitcoin, they asked me about it, and I kind of briefly like summarized what it was and why I have belief in it, and they looked into it, and they fucking, I think they bought a whole Bitcoin, guys. <laughs> so that could have fucking changed their life, you know? Um, some people just don't want to hear it, though. They, they think that, you know, it's just not worth their time, but they don't have the, they're not in the right mindset to even have that conversation, guys, you know? A lot of people don't care because they're stuck, they're, they're content with how they are. They don't care about having life-changing games. They just want to go to work, come home, spend their check at the bar, and that's life, you know? To me, that's, there's more to life than that, guys, but, um. Anyways, moving on, moving on from that, uh, let's talk about our block real quick. This is about what I was talking about. This guy, this is T Cryptus. You should follow him on Twitter. Um, he's always posting about our block. Let me just read this, what he said real quick. Over 900,000 our block tokens, Coinbase loaded, inventory ready to sell, and another 4 million stored in a handful of Coinbase wallets ready to restock the shelves. Like ticket, ticket master prep for a Taylor Swift tour. When you've got an asset this strong and a dip this big, it's just smart business. Guys, that's a fact though. I, I, I said that in my last video. I, this dude took the words out of my mouth almost like, I agree. What? Why are they buying 5 million tokens or whatever, you know? Like, obviously they're restocking the shelves, getting ready for them shits to get cleaned out, you know? It just, that's what it is what it is. The art block's fucking changing the Web3. Just, I talk about art block every day almost on my channel. Super bullish on them. Quick thing on LCX. Um, this is from this guy. I just sometimes just type LCX and see what people are saying. It's just interesting to see what other people's opinions are. But sometimes I catch things like this and they really catch my attention. Because, um, let me just read this. The literal... EU planners who drew up the MICAR crypto regulation paper specifically mentioned LCX. I'm not sure how much more black and white it needs to be before people wake up. Coinbase and LCX are the only safe places for USDT now. A coincidence? Bro. Guys, wake up. Hello. Wake the fuck up, buddy. You know? Guys. Let's see what else is going on here. Uh, let me just go to uh, what else I saw. Oh, this is their time. This is like LCX baby, and they're tokenizing diamonds. They're locking up the physical diamonds in the LCX vault in Liechtenstein, and um, they give you an NFT, and they give you these diamonds tokens also. Um, anyways, guys, they're, they're tokenizing all kinds of shit now. They're tokenizing fucking watches. They're tokenizing shoes. They're tokenizing uh, what fucking a how uh, real estate, uh, whatever, they're tokenizing, whatever. You can almost possibly imagine they're tokenizing shit now. Now it says, look, tokenization, uh, they're tokenizing wine. What the fuck? 
You know, what, what is this crazy shit? Wine meets blockchain. guys i just think that's very interesting um super super low cap right now time ends it's still like under five million market cap i think that's you know worth the risk worth the risk in my opinion to invest in time and you have to go to a coinbase wallet and swap eat for it or you know that's the only way you can buy it it's not listed you can't use lcx united states yet this is how uh, i don't know how to say it. um guys they're seriously coming correct I don't know how else to really say it. Like I said, they have nine uh, compliant regulation at whatever you call them, like certifications or whatever. Nine. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight. Fucking nine. It's a lot. How many does Binance have? How many does Kraken have? The only people that are compliant other than them is really fucking Coinbase, to be honest with you, In the, as far as centralized exchanges are concerned. Coinbase has been compliant. That's why I've been bullish on Coinbase. And when they came after the SEC, guys, they've been compliant with SEC since they opened. Since they opened their doors, they came with them, told them what they were doing, what they were selling, and the SEC was like, oh, okay. And then guess who came in? Gensler, Biden administration. Yep, they come in. Gensler just fucking throws a wrench in the whole operation. Your security. Get the fuck out of here, man. We need to, we need Trump back, you know? Guys, we seriously need Trump back. Anyways, um, moving on. A little Bitcoin news, a little Bitcoin news. After the Bitcoin happened, whoa, whoa. That's not what I want to do. Whoa, buddy. You know what I just did? Okay, after the Bitcoin halving in 2020, Bitcoin ranged 150 days in a buoyant price range between 9,000 and 11,000. We are currently 60 days after the halving and people are deeply depressed about the price action. Every cycle again. Let's look at this chart. Some things in the way a little bit. Okay, so where are we at here? Days after halving. Look at this. We are about... 50, 60 days, guys, we're going to start climbing up any day now, you know? And some of these didn't go up till, like I said, about, when is this one? That's after it topped out. 50 to 150 days, guys, until we really, after the halving, we're already 60 plus days after. So what do you think is going to happen? Stock market's going up, Nvidia's fucking mooning. What happens after that? You know? History doesn't always repeat itself, but it sure as fuck rhymes. Um... Yeah, moving on to the next thing I saw. Uh, this is just something cool. Uh, on this day, exactly 13 years ago, Bitcoin flash crashed to 17 to below one cent. If you bought $100 of Bitcoin during the crash, it'd be worth 650 million today. You know? What? Guys, wow. The power of fucking investing and time in the market is something. Something crazy. Um, this is just uh, something I read I just want to share. I don't know, article, I don't want to read the whole thing, but it says Bitcoin prices are consolidating within a well-established trade range. Investors remain in a genuinely favorable position, with over 87% of the circulating supply held in profit with a cost basis below the spot price. Guys, so most people right now, um, they're in gains. That's not like huge, if everyone's capitulating and selling. Most people have already been in the game and they've, they just know what's coming. We're waiting, being patient, you know? Um, Let's see here on the, oh, uh, no, I don't want to subscribe. All right, here we go. This is the economic calendar. Monday, Tuesday, we got until sell. Uh, okay, Wednesday, today was a holiday. And then Thursday, yep, we got initial jobless claims. That's a weekly report, right, guys? Initial jobless claims. If it comes in higher than expected, then that might give us some relief, you know, for the bulls. Um... I'm not sure if anything else is going to move the market on here. Um, maybe Friday, some of that data might, but... <clears throat> yeah, guys, I'm trying to... We probably won't really see any crazy price action until 
next the end of next week we got core PCE um, that's gonna move markets for sure on June 28th but um, other than that let's look at the CME Fed watch tool next Fed meeting in 41 days July 31st still 10 for 23 percent ease 89 percent chance of no change okay let's fast forward to September meeting um, 65.9% chance is, wow, 31% no change. Let's go to November, 79% chance is, December, 94.4% chance is, guys, so there is a possibility, though, in July, that number can move, that number can change, guys, everyone else has already cut rates, Canada, uh, all these other people, they already cut rates, so you can't complete with global like liquidity with everyone else easing and you're tightening it just doesn't work you're gonna have to fucking you know if you can't beat them join them bro that's basically what's gonna happen and if we get good cool like the inflation looks like it's cooling down um when we get this all this uh, data coming out pce ppi and cpi we get to hit with the combo all three look cool and the jobs data is shitty unemployment higher guys i don't know maybe rate cuts because they're gonna be pushing them hard they can't wait too long you wait too long shit starts falling apart and then when you cut rates when the you know when it's already that bad it doesn't really it takes longer to fucking recover you know this stuff is lingering like it, when they start cutting rates i mean raising rates it takes like fucking six to twelve months for the shit to even really look at what it's doing to the market guys so this is like a very sensitive thing that they're, they can't cut too early and they can't cut too late, <clears throat> you know. But if we get news coming out, that, that, like I said, the market since we could change. When this year started, they were like, oh, seven rate cuts. Now they're barely talking about one. Like I said, that could change with all, any data coming out. That could be easily changed. So don't get too bearish. Don't get too bullish. Just know that that's a possibility it's also a possibility we don't see rate cuts till september and i think that's probably definitely september is definitely gonna happen even on here it's saying like 70 percent all right so i'll get your panties in a bunch guys it just gives us a little bit more time to build our bags up and there's just something else i want to talk about real quick putin is in fucking north korea and uh i guess he's trying to stock up small arms and get maybe like vehicles and weapons from them and shit because russia is desperate fighting ukraine they can't keep up with Biden's money for her, you know like uh they're resorting to using like shit from the cold war that they've had stored in fucking storage facilities that are like rusting and shit you know that's how desperate they are because they keep getting destroyed by all these anti-tank missiles and shit that we're sending in ukraine but um uh, yeah guys other than that <clears throat> I can subscribe to my channel. You guys keep, we gotta keep going through the trenches. You gotta keep bobbing, bobbing, chugging through that mud, boy. You know? Just keep your head down. Don't get fudded out. Just keep the cost averaging. You know, these altcoins, especially, guys, these altcoins are highly undervalued, oversold. To guarantee you these gains, I mean, the, all these losses that we've taken on altcoins can be made back in a week or less. With some bullish market sentiment, you know? Like, look at Art Block. This shit was moving like fucking a thousand percent in like a week. <laughs> Trust me, Coinbase is loading up too. They know what's coming. So, guys, just be aware of that, you know? Is it for?